guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching X-Men 97. Hey guys, well, welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching episode 7 of X-Men 97. I like that that worked. Rhymed very nice. Anyway, uh, I've been off for a couple weeks. Uh, I haven't been able to watch this in quite some time, so I'm ready to jump back into this world. Uh, the last episode was very uh, Storm-focused and very Xavier-focused, uh, thankfully, because I feel like I had to go a long time without Professor X, and um, it was nice to see what he was up to, but whoa. Uh, what a place to be. The Shi'ar are interesting. Uh, Deathbird is... Very interesting. Look, I'm not even gonna say I don't like her. Uh, she's scary. She's beautiful. She's a lot of different things. Um, but most of all, like, I don't, she doesn't look trustworthy and she doesn't act trustworthy. So, like, when she's like, ah, you know, like, erase the memories of the human. Let him really prove that he wants to be one of us. You know, it's kind of like, uh oh. Yeah. Yeah, she's trying any way she can to make her sister look foolish so she can overthrow her. And now with Xavier wanting to leave to come back to Earth because he has discovered that his X-Men, that his children are in trouble, that there is death that has occurred. Uh, you know, he saw Gambit as a skeleton. And that's super traumatic. <sighs> I mean, it was traumatic when I saw it again. The thing with this world is that people die and come back all the time. So it's possible we'll see Gambit at some point in a different timeline or in, you know, uh, past episodes, a different future. I'm not quite sure, but I don't know if it's the last time we ever really see Gambit. But like, if that's how he goes out and we never have anything from him again, it was a beautiful episode. And what a way to go out. But having Xavier back, you know, the whole world thinks he's dead. So I'm pretty sure that's going to cause a problem. He had a last will and testament. I'm sure that would be a problem. But also Magneto hasn't kind of resurfaced anywhere. And I think if he were dead, that would have been kind of a major focus of the last episode. Um, so something happened to where he was able to not be where the explosion was. Because the Sentinel did say, like, um, target eliminated. So most of the time they say that when they are dead. I don't, I don't, I don't think Magneto's dead. I don't think that that's what's happened. I don't think that we would lose <laughs> Magneto, but then also Gambit in the same episode. I don't think that they would actually do that. One, because it would downplay, like, Gambit's death if we're like, oh, God, Magneto died during that episode. Um, I don't think that that's the case. But um, the Shi'ar, uh, Lalandra's going to get overthrown. Her sister's going to be running the joint, and that's scary. Um, what was really interesting is how they um, still had, like, the Kree, Supreme Intelligence, all that was mentioned, and I didn't really realize those worlds collided. I know it's Marvel, but, like... I it just never occurred to me that that would be like the way that we would see the shows interact with each other. You know, I thought of all of a sudden, you know, Deadpool would be here and then the Avengers would pop up or something, you know, like, like where like all the main players are all of a sudden heavily involved. Uh, but you know what? I like it because it's still a link. It's still a link. Uh, we also saw Storm get her powers back. Ooh, she got her groove back. She, I think she's more powerful than she was before. And uh, Forge, you know, her and Forge are, are a thing. And I'm not upset about it. Um, I was questioning, like, what Forge's power was. And a lot of people were, like, saying that he is, like, kind of like a Tony Stark where he can create any form of technology as long as he's got the backing, the power, and the money, which was what Tony did. Uh, but Forge, I guess, is, like, incredibly intelligent and c can create those things like he did to help her try to get her powers back. Now... Ooh, where do we go from here? Because Genosha is completely destroyed. Oh, that was heartbreaking to see. Scott had an issue. <laughs> I don't want to say an issue. Uh, Scott was technically mentally cheating on Jean by talking with Madeline. I get it. That was the woman that he had shared a lot of his life with. But I don't know if it was cheating of emotion or, like, closure or trying to get through it together somehow. Like, this horrible thing happened to us. How, how do we even begin to process, you know, we, our child was sent into the future and Madeline saw Cable. Cable came back in time 
and said, Mom, and like, you know, I'm so sorry. And I thought he had brought all the Sentinels with him. That is not the case, because at the end of the episode, we 100% see Trask talking to Sinister. And I'm like, Sinister did all of this? Like, that's... I mean, I didn't expect him to go nowhere i i don't know if if mojo pops out from behind the scenes like i don't i don't know if mojo's still alive uh, i feel like he was defeated uh he was finished <laughs> in the video game but you know i was just like i feel like it's a, it's a combination of a lot of people because every episode kind of ended with a big bad or t speaking of big bads or you know there's there's villains in every episode that i think could all like like in the opening when they have both teams like running at each other like the old school thing of like Mag magneto's team and xavier's team but like it's like all of them have combined to then fight all of these people <laughs> i don't know uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what this episode uh, has to hold. So, uh, really, we didn't get, like, any anything from Rogue. Poor thing. She just wanted to be able to touch somebody and, you know, feel that closeness and that intimacy. And she realizes that the love that she has for Gambit doesn't really need that. And he's never required it in their relationship either. And a lot of people in the comments were saying, like, it's just so sad that he never got to realize that she chose him. And I don't really think that that mattered to him. I don't think he he cared whether or not she chose him. He always chose her. And when I feel like in relationships, uh, this is funny, I always tell people this, that, like, like if you're dating and you're kind of like, well, they like me, but I don't really know how I feel about them then it's probably not for you. But if you like that person, if you care about that person and you want to continue to pursue it, then yeah. Or like if you love them, you just, you love them. And I feel like for Gambit, he's going to love her regardless of what she chooses. And it's not necessarily that he's going to push to be with her or anything, but he's still choosing to love her no matter what. And even in the moment when he gives his life, you know, he still knows that he loves her. And I think that that's all that really mattered to him. Um, I think he would have loved to have heard that she chose him, but I don't think that um, he needed that in order to, to be the courageous person that he was. And uh, he didn't need it when he died either because I don't think he questioned the fact that she loved him. I think it was always about this one like little thing that kept them from just having everything. And, and he knows if that didn't exist, they would have had just complete magic together. So I don't think he doubted her love for him for a second. At least I hope so. That's what's giving me peace with the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> but I want to see what happens now. The, the whole fallout from Genosha, where uh, Magneto is, when Charles is going to show up, uh, is Jean still mad at Scott? And, and uh, I mean, I think she has a right to be mad, but then like, like there's just, it's such a messy situation that it's kind of like offering grace do, goes way further than being angry and feeling like you've been deceived and just saying like hey like why don't you talk to her at least once a day and you know figure things out because it's just like if you're not in love with me if it really is that version then you need to go be with her and i know that that would be really hard for Jean, but i don't know i'm trying to reason with like this love thing that Gene and Scott never really truly get to be happy with one another, so I don't know why it would start happening now. So, why make a fuss? So guys, I'm excited to get into this episode and kind of just see the fallout from everything and where we go from here, so let's get into it. Oh god, I can't. I can't. I can't! <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man. I got a couple of these to do today. Remy Le Beau would be the first to remind you that life, like the cards, is wild. <laughs> how could Remy, so tuned to potential, fail to see how his sins had made him into a hero? <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Every gambler has a tell. Modesty was gambits. <laughs> How could she not be here? He saved all of us. He saved her. He loved her. 
It's too painful. You were spared witnessing that which Hogan and I saw in Genosha. What she battles is not mere grief. And our dear Jubilee is wise to be afraid. <sighs> I'm glad Kurt did that eulogy. Oh, girl. I get it. Oh, God. Where are you going? This is a top secret United States facility. You are trespassing. Cease and... Yes! Yeah, she gonna mess you guys up. We really deserved this version of Rogue on screen. We really deserved this version of her. Yeah, I'd be very afraid if I were y'all. Gentlemen. Need Ross. That we're standing in the same place built to hold the Hulk. That Ross, huh? Our intruder is an unhinged mutant from the swamp. She ain't no. She ain't no what? Threat? We're a Harry Garrick and Bolivar Trask. <laughs> Not your kind. <laughs> we're the good guys. You killed those, sugar. Now you get me. Ooh. Oh, goosebumps. You've gone a week now with no new survivors. Finding even one more survivor could give mutants some hope. Oh, I love you, Scott. Folks are frightened. They think Dr. Trask just kicked off an all-out war between humans and mutants. I mean, he kind of did. If scared voters see me helping your kind, uh, sorry, sir. Your son, kind? Just, uh, unfortunate optics. Optics, optics sir. Optics in the glasses. I'm playing politics here to ensure someone less kind to your cause doesn't end up in the office you're so quick to disrespect. Be patient, Scott. Check the headlines, Mr. President. They're all about the virtue of patience. Oof. Glad that button was just to take the hologram down, <laughs> not launch something. For every mutant still out there who's watching these images, they need hope. And let's go remind the world that times like these are when dreaming matters most. I love that moment so much. <sighs> so they don't know about Storm. Storm was in Genosha, though. She saw Genosha. <clears throat> what? Stand down, Rogue. What? Where is Henry Gyrick? He was moved out of Rikers last. I was just talking about the Avengers, and oh my God! Rampaging across the country dishonors those who were lost. Skip the hogwash and tell me what America's top cop is doing all the way out here. Like you, I am blown away right now. To get our hands on Bolivar Trask. He built the Sentinels. He's the natural first suspect for that master mold in Genosha. Oh my god, I have cold chills! <laughs> There's always an underground lair with Steve. OZT. So, who's Gyrick to these folks? Exactly what I plan to ask him. Gyrick was transferred to a facility in Mexico City. Once I get the thumbs up, I'll lead my team to Mexico to apprehend Gyrick. Uh, I reckon we nab Gyrick now before our mystery boys move him again. Mm -hmm. This uniform shows up in Mexico bashing heads in with you. It sends a message. Damn right that you stand with mutants. Unless you don't now. Gotta do this by the book, Rogue. Right now, my hands are tied. Well, if your hands are tied, you won't be needing this. Okay. Was that necessary? I did not expect to see Captain America in this. Oh my god, that made my heart race. Well, what is OZT? I thought they were gonna have Zola pop up, and I was like, oh my god! Look what happens when we don't hide. Is it worth it, Jubilee? To be who you are? I just know <laughs> I wouldn't want my parents finding out who I was on the five o'clock news. Mm -hmm. Don't want them burying a stranger. Will you come with me? Oh. Duh. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you see that today where people have to hide who they are because they could be, you know, ostracized. Riots are the language of the unheard. Martin Luther King. Yep. But smashing windows is destruction, not communication. It's communication. Perhaps the professor's vision for the future was too nearsighted, and begging for your tolerance was our first mistake. No, that's not what I was saying. But it is what you mean. Yeah, that's what she means. 
Now forgive me. I dare not waste any more of your tolerance, Miss Tilby. You know when you made Beast mad. Yep. Now this can't be right. This ain't no jail. This is a damn resort. Mm-hmm. Sounds about right for a mastermind criminal. He oh, smiles. I have no idea where Bolivar Trask is. I'd wager the ops who put you up nice and fancy might know. What's OZT anyway? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> Tell Summers his wife's cute psychic probes won't work this time. Honey, this ain't that sort of probe. Oh, <laughs> oh. She's being ruthless and I kind of dig it. Quit oh, me. oh, oh! What the hell was that? Jesus! Oh, someone up ahead. A telepath. Madeline. Oh, I didn't even think about Madeline. Extraordinary. Diamond transmutation has never been one of Anna's oh. abilities. Perhaps a dormant mutation triggered by duress? I thought that was one of her abilities. I've always done well. <laughs> Under pressure. I'm sorry that it wasn't Madeline. All X Men oh. Blackbird immediately. It's Trask. Sinister promised to help me get my life back. He didn't say it'd be a mutant massacre. Why? Isn't that what Trask wanted, though, originally? Like you, Trask. Come to the UN Peace Legion in Madripoor. The lobby vending machine is never out of diet. Hmm. Come see the horrifying face of your future. So get yourself a Diet Coke. Trask created Master Mold. All of this is literally his fault, mm -hmm. i.e. we can't trust him. Yep. <laughs> really is Stranger Days. Buckle up, team. <laughs> we head to Madripoor. Madripoor, here we come. I mean, you can't ignore it, but you have to consider that it Your is, is a huge trap. Wine in the parlor. Non-alcoholic spritzers oh. will be available for you and your friends. Oh. Thanks, Jimbo. Thanks, no Jimbo. No one raised this way is normal. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, this is a big moment for you, kiddo. Coming out to your parents is hard. You got this, okay? We go in, charm with small talk, and... Why? I'm a mutant. Just like that. <laughs> you can fill up that wine glass. All the way to the top. Or she says, I know. I've always known. This is such a relief. It, it is? is? Four of our homes have caught fire mysteriously <laughs> since 2016. And do you truly think your father and I believe a band of Somali pirates hijacked your yacht in the Hamptons? You knew. Why didn't you say anything? Oh, I love this. It was your secret to tell. He was worried this whole time. And they love him anyway. And you would be one of the X-Men, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you for helping my son. I was afraid he'd be facing this all alone. Now the trick will be making sure we keep this all private. What do you mean, keep it private? Shareholders are rattled by anything mutant related. They can't know we have a mutant in the family. Yeah, you kind of can't cry it from the rooftops. That sucks. And how to be more discreet. Get the boy a mask. Like, she's accepting, but she also realizes the, the, how dangerous that could oh, be. Kurt. Oh, Indeed. How do you feel now? <laughs> Bit of a headache, but I'll live. Um. Oh, it's Day of the Dead. Remy's dead. Yeah. But that don't mean I'm ready to accept it. You sure pulled the short straw in the adopted sister department, didn't you? Mm -mm. Got the gal who goes bonkers over losing a boy. Her boy. The boy. And her confusion is only natural. But she did not cause Gambit or Magneto to be killed. She helped them live. <laughs> God, I love Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> Her whole family's there. <sighs> A 
I'm probably gonna cry every episode, right? Right? That's how this is gonna, gonna go? That this, that's, that's what's gonna happen? Who's that? Just as you dreamt it. <laughs> Yet you nearly ruined my surprise. <laughs> is that Bastion Shaw? Is that who Bastion is? Rats. How terrible. So sad. Now we know what Trask meant by clearing the building. <laughs> Sleeping gas. I thought he meant I don't know the type of gas. I was like, what? They're never out of diet. I was gonna say, what happens now? I was like... secret break room behind the busted vending machine. Mm. A game, bad guy. A game. <laughs> I like more. He drives me crazy sometimes, but I like him. This episode is. He's funny. What about Mr. Sinister? That madman is one of the most brilliant engineers in history. Great. He said my designs were cute. He's building a new type of sentinel. Mm -hmm. Worse than what we saw in Genosha. Great. I won't let him make me any more of a monster than he already has. Well, we know somebody that can travel into the Easy future. Boy. I wasn't even worried. Redemption? Help us get the real bad guy. Yeah. What else can you tell us? Anything helps. I have nothing. Same sugar. Oh. Uh, is somebody else gonna catch him? Just to scare him? She dreaming this? Vogue, what have you done? What nope. we all wanted to do. Yep. Is this who we are now? That maniac killed thousands of people on Genosha. That piece of scum put a good man, my man. Terminate. Whoa. Whoa. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yuck. I don't like it. Trask has mutated into some sort of human sentinel. Okay. Prime Sentinel Protocol activated. Prime Sentinel? Whoa. Phoenix, you get the building. I'll get the debris. Oh, wow. I was gonna say, where is that going? He put Rogue down with one hit. X-Men, take him down. Oh, I was like, wait, who's that? I totally forget Morph can change. And he turned into Quicksilver, I think. So I was like, wait a second. Stay down! Oh! Do you remember what my inferior form asked you in the Sahara? How does it feel to be abandoned by the future? Oh! I don't know what that was. Oh, like an EMP? This guy's a cable? Did he just save his father? Electromagnetic cluster grenades are the quickest way to take these suckers down. Cable? What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> it can't be. Get out of my brain. You're not her. Oh my god. Nathan. Let's skip the reunion, Dad. Trask got it wrong. Sinister's working for someone else. Someone works. That's what I was saying. And if you X-Men don't stop him, there won't be much of a future worth living in. Oh my god. This is amazing. My tech's repaired a damaged alien satellite the X-Men used to chat with their allies. And our empire shall welcome Professor Charles Xavier. Our merry band of muties have been selling the world a very big lie. Merry Band of Muties. Oh, I knew Magneto was still alive. Coming out of the sky. What is this? This way, once I have to get to work, smooth as butter. So long as you stay still. Simply listen and obey. You were born for this. What a song. Sure looks strange to me. Ugh. So, I have to look up something real quick. I don't know if it's going to be a spoiler, but 
Is Bastion Sebastian Shaw? Like, because I'd feel really stupid if I said that, and that is not the case. Okay, yes. Woo! <laughs> and he's voiced by Theo James. Nice, nice, nice. Good for you, Theo. Okay, I was like, is that Sebastian Shaw? Or is it, like, is, he's going by Bastion? But I was like, I don't know. Um, which is very never-ending story-ish. Uh, anyway, I don't know why that's the thing that I thought of. Okay, uh, Trask is a human sentinel. Like, a, what did they, what did it say he was? That he was Prime Bolivar? I hate the name Bolivar. Um, okay, so we have a more intense sentinel program that was made um, with Bastion Shaw and Sinister. Um, I, I, I'm very much... <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm going to move over my little leg rest I have here. Um, I'm very much uh, behind Rogue <laughs> and her rage. Uh, I, but it's so funny that I was like, I didn't think that they were going to connect the X-Men to like the MCU via the Kree. And then they gave us Captain freaking America in this one. I was just like, oh my God, is he going to go over and say, I hacked this computer and, and it was Zola? And I, I don't know if we still, I don't think we got what OZT stands for. I don't think that happened. Morph was intercom. I thought for sure that he was Quicksilver in that moment, but maybe I'm wrong. He looked like Quicksilver because I was like, wait, who the hell is that? Um, oh, wow. Okay. So, uh, the more, oh God, the morgue. <laughs> No. <laughs> the rogue that we got in this one, I feel, is like the one that we really deserved in the movies. Um, we, I think if we had given it more time, we might have. But, you know, we, we and, and, and no hate to the actress. Um, Anna Paquin, I think, you know, did really well with what she was given. And then I uh, recently, I was building some Ikea furniture <laughs> and I was watching Popcorn in Bed do the reaction for Days of Future Past, which is probably my favorite X-Men movie too. And they were watching the Rogue get it, which is good. <laughs> That's the superior one, I think. Um, and like really like showcased like how strong Rogue is. And, and in this one, we got to see her anger. We got to see her emotions. We got to see her revenge. Um, letting Trask die was kind of a shock. And when Wolverine was like, she did what all of us wanted to do. I was like, yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, like sometimes they're, they're a little too good for my liking. And not that I'm like, you know, good old fashioned murder is what we do, but sometimes you have to snuff out a bad. Sometimes you you can't depend on people to put him in jail and him to stay there, as you could see with, uh, was it Nyrick? Uh, I always keep, I, I, I never, I'm sorry, I never keep the names up, so then I never know who I'm talking about here. Gyrick, Nyrick. <laughs> um, and, it, I mean, Gyrick was living in, you know, paradise. He, he, he was, like, set up. Uh, look good, look fun, look great. Um, so, you know, you can't always... <laughs> put money on the fact that they are actually going to be punished and they will actually be in prison because that's not a thing. Um, I also knew that when Trask sent the message that it was a trap, I think everybody was like, we have to follow up with it, but it definitely is not legit. Trask being actually sad that there was a uh, genocide against mutants. Yeah, like he's not going to feel sympathy or empathy for that. That's essentially what he wanted. I know he wants to protect humans, but oh, oops, all the, you know, mutants were killed. Well, at least I protected the humans. That's, you know, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> That's like very like, mm, Ross Marquand does the voice of Professor X. Do you have any idea how much that makes me happy to see? I love all the voices Ross can do. And he's he is the the guy in the MCU to do voices like he's just so good. Uh, I got distracted. I'm sorry. <laughs> easy to do. Easy, easy to do. But with, with 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 Trask sending the message, I was like, well, we have to follow up with that. But I, did Storm not go to Genosha at the end of the last episode? I'm pretty sure she did. Um, and so we, they don't know that she's still alive. So I don't know what we're doing with that. I don't know where Professor X is. If, I mean, I don't think that he can just like get to Earth like lickety split. But uh, I'd like it if he could. Yeah, so I'm, okay, you know what, now it's hitting me that Bastion mentioned evolution, 
And if he used to be Sebastian Shaw, then obviously he has evolved into who he is now. So I would imagine that whatever is happening here is either a power up or it just connects him to all the computers. Like, um, oh, I hate myself right now. You can do it. You can think of it. You could think of it. What is it called? What is it called? <laughs> it's like I'm trying to summon it in my brain and I keep seeing pictures of it. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. The thing that Professor X puts on his head. If I think about it, I will shout it at random when it pops into my head. It's it's kind of like that. It probably just connects him to all of the computers. Um, I'm inter I thought for sure that we were going to have found Madeline, but it ended up being Emma Frost. And then what's really weird is Beast was like, oh, she's never taken on diamond form before. And that's what I know her the most from is taking diamond form in movies. Um, so like that was really interesting. But the fact that, it, you know, Jean could sense her and immediately they both thought that it was Madeline. And I love how she kind of had like an understanding of how he feels about Madeline. And then the fact that he got to see Cable and Cable, he's just kind of like, let's talk about it later, dad. Uh, who, <laughs> who, 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 who. Mm, owie. Owie. Yeah. Um, you know, he saw Jean and he knows that it's not Madeline. I mean, he's like, you're not her. I'm very excited to see where that goes from here. You know, Beast was kind of like, seemed to kind of have a thing with the reporter. And the more he talked to her, the more it, it seemed very obvious that it was kind of like, in in certain instances, both with them being on Genosha and like uh, also with uh, Roberto, you know, it's almost like don't live out loud, you know, and I don't ever say that writing is okay, but writing sometimes is like the most aggressive form of communication that like, like we've tried talking, we've tried talking nicely, we've talked ad nauseum, we have talked to great length, we keep speaking on this, we keep talking about this, we keep going, and then finally violence erupts. And it's most of the time because it falls on deaf ears repeatedly over and over. And I do think the message gets lost a lot when it's just like, oh, we care so much more about a Lululemon that's on fire than we do about the cause that people are trying to bring attention to. And, you know, that it's it, people will never see things that they don't want to see, and they will continue to ignore things that they don't care about. And the things that they do care about, or the, they'll always try to pivot and say, well, well, you shouldn't have done this. And the goalpost continues to move. And that's why the, the, the talking and the repeat talking, and, and one time after again, after again, after again, after again, it does not matter. Uh, we see that a lot now in a lot of our news when it comes to gun violence is that they just keep moving the goalpost of like what what is willing and acceptable instead of just saying like you know what <laughs> maybe maybe we have a problem and maybe we should probably address it it's really frustrating with roberto because you know his parents were like yeah we already knew and i don't want to i don't want to compare it to being you know, gay and coming out to your parents, but it is telling them something that you are afraid that you are going to be judged for. And I think a lot more people are more open-minded now that they're just like, that's awesome. I'm here to support you any way that you need me. But in case of being a mutant and like powers, it's just like they still let him come to them on their, uh, on his own and present it. And they were like, yeah, we already knew. But then they're still like, you know, we have to we have to stay hush hush about this one, because I don't think you want it out there during this time um, so that the targets are on you. But then also when she says something about shareholders, it puts a whole new ick on it. She loves her son. She accepts her son for who he is. She already knew she was fine with it. But you know what? Please don't affect our money. Please don't affect our lifestyle. Please just why do you have to live out loud? And I hate that. I hate that like in, 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 in the world period is that people think that like you're not, you're not allowed to be different. 
And I don't care if you walk around with blue hair. If that's that, if that's what you feel in your heart and soul that you want to do, do that. Get tattoos on your neck, your face, you know, stand out as much as you want, you know, wear furry costumes, you know, like like sing out loud at random. Do be yourself. Do whatever you want to do as long as you're not hurting anybody. I don't care. I love that you're living out loud. Um, and there's some people who are so uncomfortable with it and just want to snuff it out and no, be normal because you make me feel bad about myself that I can't be this way or I don't have that or, you know, I I, I would be too embarrassed to do, be this way or live this way or do these things. And, you know, you, you have to go away because it makes me feel inferior or or just little. And it's really sick and really gross. I, I love that the X-Men really are just an allegory for a lot of different things, whether it is racism or, you know, just <laughs> bigotry, you name it. Uh, and I love that the women in the show are really, really strong. And it shows that a lot of the female X-Men uh, or the female mutants, period, are the ones that kind of have really superior powers. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> We really do. I love it. We, as though I have powers. I have the power to tear up when something's emotional. That's that's my power. Or to make a really dark joke when things are really down and out and sad. I will make a dark joke that people will be like, Jesus. And I'll be like, where? <laughs> Uh, but guys, anyway, if you want to watch full interaction of this episode, it will be available on my Patreon uh, and up to one episode early. But in the meantime, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Did you expect Captain America? I know I didn't. <laughs> I was like, Cree, Ronan, eh, I'll take it. Whoa, one of the Avengers. Holy shit. <laughs> that was exciting. I, and I don't expect to see them anytime soon, but I love a little cameo here and there. Did I ever expect a scene between Rogue and Steve Rogers? No. Am I upset? Awesome, no. <laughs> and her just whipping his shield. Like, I'm sure that went into the mountain and it caused an avalanche. Like, Rogue, like, sweetheart, I know you're mad, but, like, we, can't, we, we shan't be doing those things. We shan't be doing those things. The scene with her and Nightcrawler, I love Kurt. Kurt giving the eulogy at the beginning and saying the most beautiful things about Gambit. My God. And that, like, his tell was modesty because he was very much one of those, you know, people that it didn't matter if he was an X-Men or if he was just Remy. He lived out loud. He wore what he wanted. He looked the way he wanted. He physically showed interest in whom, whomever he wanted. You know, he was so suave. He was such a flirt and he was so sexy and that's who he was. And he was never modest until he was. And when he was modest, that was his tell. And that was such a beautiful moment from Kurt. Oh my God. And then him holding Rogue and her crying. Like Nightcrawler is like one of those underrated characters that like he was kind of like shown to be like creepy and Alan Cumming did a really good job playing him in the movies. And I really liked him in the movies as well. But I can tell you that, like, this Nightcrawler is amazing. And Morph is, like, climbing up, like, my list of, like, I'm like, he's creepy. I hate it. He doesn't have a face. Uh, he, that That's his face. That's so not kind of me to say. Um, and the more and more I see him and hear him and, like, the way, he's, the way he talks, the way he, uh, like, speaks about certain things and just uh, the, the, how he rattles things off, I'm just like, you know what? You're a lot like me. <laughs> Except he's much smoother with the delivery. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, man, I'm loving this show. Magneto being held captive by Shaw. What do you know? Just like the good old days. F. I knew he was alive. I knew it. You know, Rogue saying that she didn't lose both one, but two. I mean, she can love both men and differently and appreciate them both. Um, but yeah, I, I, mm, I cannot wait for Storm. And for Xavier to join our damn group because it will be just hunting season for Bastion. Oh, so good. And the fact that Sinister, I knew Sinister wasn't working alone. Like there had to be like way bigger bads that were behind everything. I'm just trying to think of like where we go from human sentinels. The design on that was really cool with Trask though. I will say that. And the EMP taking it out and Cable coming from out of nowhere. That was rad. That was right away. But you know what's funny is that Scott knew it was Cable, but he didn't know that Cable was Nathan. How did he know that it was Cable? Had they seen Cable before and not realized that it was Nathan? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments down below if you've listened this far. There's some people that switch it right off after the reaction, and I don't blame them because I don't know what the hell I'm talking about half the time. 
Especially this show. And thank you for everybody who's like, just enjoy it. Just sit back and enjoy it. You don't have to know everything. I want to know everything, though. I want to know everything. I want to be the smart girl in the room. I do know that the next three episodes are, um, it's a three-parter. I'm hoping that I can watch those today and that I can get through them all today. Um, if not, then I'm going to have to wait and do them at a different time. Uh, we'll see, because if I'm wearing the same thing, then I have. If not, it's because I have to watch some other things before the next episode. Um, I'm, I'm sure Nathaniel would want all four episodes at one time so he could watch them all. <laughs> Sorry, Nathaniel, but thank you for editing this one. Everyone give Nathaniel a round of applause in the comments down below. Uh, but yeah, guys, come back here for the next episode. Whew. In the meantime, I'll see ya.